I would now like to invite Manny Noakes to share her thoughts on how we can get the balance right. Thanks, Manny. Thank you very much, Robin, and lovely to be here today. Um, grains and weight. Well, is there really any relationship between the two? And if you were to look at the epidemiology, certainly there seems to be some good data from large studies that shows relationships between uh, the intake of grains and uh, weight. Um, the health professional study uh, in 27,000 men, for each 40 grams per day increase in whole grains, weight gain was reduced by 1.1 pounds and this association persisted after changes in added bran and fibre intakes and that this suggests that there are additional components in whole grains that may contribute to the favourable metabolic uh, alterations that you see. The Harvard Nurses Health Study, 75,000 nurses, also showed that women who consumed more whole grains consistently weighed less. The increases in whole grain intake associated with significantly less weight gain over time and what was interesting was that refined grain intake was linked to increased risk of weight gain, so the opposite. So this is interesting data, but again, remember, this is observational data. It shows relationships. It doesn't show cause and effect. Another epidemiological study uh, that was recently published by Mozaferi and Adele, uh, again, uh, a four-year change in weight was associated with the intake of whole grains. And here you see that there are a whole range of foods that were either positively or negatively associated with changes in weight over time. And I suspect that what this really shows us is that particular dietary patterns are associated with either weight gain uh, or with weight maintenance. And certainly it appears that dietary patterns with whole grains uh, appear to be uh, somewhat protective. Um, of interest, though, uh, and I found this of particular interest when I was looking at the literature in regards to grains and, and weight gain, and that is uh, in this study, which was the Framingham Offspring Study, um, there is a relationship between whole grain intake and lower visceral adipose tissue. And similarly, as we saw in the previous study, increasing refined grains was associated with higher visceral adipose tissue. And if you look at the amounts of whole grains that appeared uh, apparently most protective, about three serves per day, and between one and two uh, serves of refined grains appeared to be relatively protected. So a combination of high levels of whole grain and a relatively small uh, amount of refined grains appears to be um, most protective. Again, I stress that these are studies that are observational. And in order to uh, demonstrate plausibility, one needs to have some kind of mechanism uh, behind which these sorts of effects are observed. And one of the mechanisms behind the relationship between grains and weight has to do uh, potentially with appetite regulation. So this is a small study published in 2011, uh, which was a short-term study in a small number of people. Uh, and it essentially is trying to assess in an uh, in this study whether the intake of whole grain, in particular bread in this case, uh, was effective in uh, altering appetite uh, in healthy individuals. And what this small study concluded was that there was no apparent effect. However, that was just one study. What are other studies saying? And it's always reassuring to have meta-analyses because uh, it can provide us with a lot more robust information on uh, a range of literature. And here, the effect was not looking at whole grain intake, but indeed the effect of dietary fibre on subjective appetite, energy intake, and body weight, a systematic review of randomised controlled trials. What was particularly intriguing about this study was that fibres were grouped by chemical structure uh, and their physicochemical properties, their viscosity, their solubility, and fermentability. Uh, and this is an important point in relation to the diversity of what dietary fibre provides. It will depend very much on the food source and the way that the food is processed as to what the characteristics of that dietary fibre is. Fibres that were characterised as being more viscous, for example, pectins, beta-glucans and guar gum, reduced appetite in studies more often than those with less viscous fibres and which also applied to acute energy intake. But this particular meta-analysis 
uh, concluded that whilst the effect was there, the overall effects on energy intake and body weight were relatively small. Nevertheless, it certainly does relate back to those epidemiological studies and provides a degree of supporting uh, information. A further study uh, looked at the role of whole grains versus refined wheat, bread and pasta and the effect that it might have on postprandial glycemia, appetite and subsequent ad libitum energy intake in young healthy adults. I'm always intrigued when these studies are done in young healthy adults because these days they're relatively few and far between <laughs> and I'm always interested in what actually happens in those people that are perhaps struggling more with their weight. Nevertheless, the study looked at test meals, very controlled study, uh, and looked at uh, the effect uh, postprandially, so the short-term effect, refined wheat bread, whole grain wheat bread, refined wheat pasta and whole grain wheat pasta. And what the study concluded was that the whole grain wheat bread, but not the pasta, resulted in increased satiety and reduced hunger compared to the refined um, products. However, even though a product such as this wheat bread made people feel less hungry, they didn't actually eat less uh, postprandially. Now, does that mean that that will happen on every occasion? It's hard to know, but at least in the short term, um, energy intake wasn't greater. Perhaps though in the context of an energy restricted diet, it might assist people to stay on an energy restricted diet a little bit longer. Now David talked a little bit about rye and different grains have different attributes. They have different structures. They have different kinds of dietary fibres. And rye has been studied quite extensively. Uh, and this particular study looked at rye versus wheat but different ways that rye uh, is, um, uh, is structured. Uh, and what they found was that um, depending on the refined nature of the rye, it had uh, a greater effect if it was less, uh, less refined. Uh, but that in both instances, the rye was able to show um, a benefit uh, over uh, refined wheat uh, in this particular study. What about whole grain rye breakfasts and um, uh, what uh, impact does this have on uh, sust sustained satiety over a longer period of time, in this case three weeks? Uh, and this particular study looked at whole grain rye porridge breakfast, uh, which also showed greater ratings of satiety during four hours post-consumption compared to refined wheat bread uh, breakfast, and that this wasn't just uh, an acute response that it was actually persisted uh, over a three week period. Uh, and so it does suggest that this effect isn't just a fly by night, one occasion effect, but it does actually persist. Different studies that are looking at appetite regulation are done in different ways. And depending on how those studies are done, uh, you can interpret them differently. This particular study, I think, was interesting in that what it showed was not so much that appetite was different after an acute isocaloric consumption, but that if you feed a low calorie fiber breakfast that's high in insoluble fiber uh, compared to another breakfast that has a higher level of calories but less fiber, that you eat less at breakfast, but you don't compensate for that deficit at the next meal. So what this suggests is that High fibre foods, and particularly high insoluble fibre foods, uh, may assist in um, keeping energy intake down because those foods are lower in energy density and that you don't appear to compensate for that energy deficit at a later meal. So again, uh, whilst some foods, if you were actually to compare calorie for calorie, they may not always be exactly the same. In this particular case, uh, a lower, a higher fibre breakfast cereal uh, can be a lower kilojoule breakfast cereal and that can be just as effective at reducing intake as a higher calorie cereal and therefore overall reducing caloric intake over the day. There are many studies that are looking at, at, uh, at fibre and again this is a whole grain study uh, comparing whole grain with wheat, refined wheat. Uh, and the impact on body composition. And remember I showed you that study with the graphical indication of the relationship between 
grain intake and body composition, again an association. Well, this study has actually demonstrated in a 12-week study that uh, the group that were on the whole grain wheat actually reduced their body fat percentage more than the refined grain group, uh, wheat group. So body weight did not differ, but body composition did differ. And the reason for this is really not clear, but I think this is a really important indication of the potential that grain foods may have, which may be uh, similar to or different from their dietary fibre composition. And this study, again, demonstrates the same thing. Uh, this is a study by Katja et al. Uh, on one side you see the, uh, the graph of how much or how many serves of um, uh, grain was in the diet, it was around five compared to the uh, control. And what you see is that although the weight was not significantly different between the two groups, what they did see was abdominal fat loss was greater in the whole grain group. Now you might say 1.2 versus 1 kilo is not much difference, but this is abdominal fat and the abdominal fat proportion is not high, so it's 200 grams which is um, you know, not an insignificant amount if you accumulate that over a period of time, particularly in an area of the body and an area of adiposity that is associated with insulin resistance and some of the adverse health effects. Now, while we're talking about grains, we're in an environment at the moment where there are trends towards lower carbohydrate intakes. This has been coming for some time. And even in the US, in the weight loss registry, we're seeing an impact of more people choosing to adopt lower carbohydrate diets for weight um, management. And just to give you an indication of um, the different levels of carbohydrate uh, with different dietary patterns. A low-fat diet is usually a high-carbohydrate diet, greater than 200 grams per day. Very low carbohydrates. I'm sure you, will, as dietitians, would be familiar with the Atkins diet and South Beach diets, and that they're less than 100 grams per day, and may even, in some cases, in the early parts of their uh, dietary pattern, less than 20 grams per day. Um, the CSIRO diet, uh, that is one of the dietary patterns that we've developed, is really very much in between, between 100 and 200 grams per day, uh, and I would call it moderate carbohydrate. And the current intakes of carbohydrate, at least current as far as 1995, we'll, I guess we'll find out about what is truly current uh, sometime in the next couple of years, but it's around about 45% of energy or 245 grams of carbohydrate. Uh, and it's possible and it seems that carbohydrate intakes, at least from grains, is going down somewhat. And, and is that a concern? Well, quite possibly, depending on the type of carbohydrate that has been reduced in the diet. And the Institutes of Medicine recommends that uh, for carbohydrates, greater than 130 grams a day is desirable based on the amount of carbohydrate you need, the glucose production and optimal um, brain um, metabolism. What are the foods on a very low carbohydrate diet? I don't need to tell you as dietitians what they are, but just to uh, make the point that uh, the foods that are generally unrestricted are protein foods, uh, both animal proteins and, uh, and other protein foods, as well as foods that contain a lot of fat, including saturated fat, mildly restricted foods such as cheeses, tofu, nuts, um, moderately restricted foods, um, and most particularly the foods that are excluded are grains, bread, rice, potatoes, pasta and cereals, all the foods that David indicated uh, we, we should be eating at least a, a moderate amount from. And so um, this may be a concern and indeed I would argue that um, some of these foods may be undesirable but other foods are being thrown out with the bathwater. So what's happening with low carbohydrate diets and what is the evidence for their efficacy uh, and what we have is mostly information on their impacts on cardiovascular health. Uh, and this is a meta-analysis that shows um, some of the changes there, uh, but there's still concern about LDL cholesterol. The, the foods on the CSIRO diet, you can see the protein on one side, but a considerable amount of grain foods on the other, including whole grains and also high fiber cereal. And the amount of fiber in the, in the diet is still quite significant. Um, the most successful diet for weight loss maintenance from the diet gene study has shown that a higher protein low GI diet is most, appears to be most effective for weight loss maintenance. Again, a diet that does contain grains. And so really to conclude, 
there is certainly evidence for grains actively assisting in weight management, particularly whole grains and abdominal fat loss. There is a potential weight ben benefit, but what it's, is it due to is not clear. Is it fiber? Is it the structure of the fiber? Uh, the whole grain, the glycemic index, the nutrient density is not clear. Less refined grain foods, though, provide uh, important nutrients and phytonutrients for bowel and overall health, as well as making the diet a lot easier to follow. And just to conclude that in weight management, inclusion of at least three grain serves uh, of, of foods that are high in fibre, whole grain and low GI would best contribute to achieving uh, optimal nutrient recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manny. It's uh, great to see that uh, those high fibre, whole grain foods do have a role to play, particularly when it comes to, to weight management.